seventh and eighth grade. It's Harry Pedigo. How are you guys doing? Hope you're having a great start to the week, you know, maintaining a good and healthy direction with your studies and also with your physical fitness, getting outside, doing some push-ups, doing some sit-ups, some pull-ups, the big three. We're talking about United States history, okay? And I have a couple things to talk with you guys about because we're transitioning into a interesting part of American history. And the name of the game is foreign policy, okay? So we've talked about, the past couple of days, we talked a little bit about like internal policies, you know, local ideas in, within the United States. The progressivism of Theodore Roosevelt and John Muir, and also um, you know, the 16th Amendment, progressivism in our government. But when we're talking about foreign policy, we're talking about the way that a country or a nation um, deals with things outside of its borders, right? How do we interact with the world, right? And so Roosevelt in this, this time period is important because there's sort of a change in the way we look at foreign policy because we think, okay, how should we be acting since we're getting to become a world power at this point? How should we act towards the rest of the world? What should our model be? And you'll, you'll kind of have to maybe think about the way foreign policy um, was before Roosevelt and this kind of turn of the century, early 1900s time. And so you have to think about, well, what, what would Washington, our first president, what was his kind of, what was his mentality with, um, with foreign policy? What was his attitude towards it? And you see that... Washington and the founding fathers, once America was established or you know, established its independence from Great Britain, they were very much, you know, isolationist in a way. And they wanted to stay out of European affairs. They're kind of just like, let me live and let me be free in America and we will worry about you guys later. Basically, we'll worry about you guys when we're powerful enough to interact with you guys. But that was kind of how American foreign policy started. Kind of like generally trying to stay isolated from foreign affairs, right? Especially in Europe. Now you're gonna see, we talked a, like a little while ago, actually maybe quite a while ago, probably last year at some point, about the Monroe Doctrine, okay? And that's a change from Washington's idea on foreign policy where he said just isolation, stay away, let's just do our thing. But Monroe says, well, we also need to protect our interests, okay? So if we have any kind of, you know, um, if we have any kind of territories or if we have, especially because think about when Monroe was president, we need to make sure that we're protecting American territories, right? And he wants to protect. So you go from isolation, just like stay out of everything, to protection, okay? But now we're seeing a transition again into imperialism. So what is imperialism? You guys read about it in your textbook a little bit today, but imperialism. Can you guys think of some countries that, you know, um, in the past in American history have demonstrated imperialism? Well, a classic example would have been Great Britain. So think about what was Great Britain trying to do? You know, they were trying to go out of their, their country, their boundaries, their territories, and find out new territories. And that's how, you know, that's how we got into this big civil war mess because they had literally gone across the ocean and said, we are not only defending our territories and our interests around the world, but we're also claiming new ones to bolster our power. And that's how the United States kind of starts to behave. We're gonna see that big time in the next couple of readings, especially when Hawaii becomes a territory. So that's a clear example of imperialism. So what I want you guys to think about, and we'll discuss some more foreign policies down the road, but right now the isolationism, you could think about like the Monroe Doctrine defending your your or defending your stakes, your claims, your assets in the world, and then kind of the imperialism of um, of Roosevelt. Where do you guys think that you fit in with that? What are your thoughts on how a government should behave? Why do you think that these policies emerged? Where do you feel like your values line up with foreign policy? Where, how do you think we're acting you know, now? What do you think our nation is like now? What sort of foreign policy would you say we fall into now, right? Maybe it's a combination of them, but think about that because this is relevant to us currently 
because there's certainly a great concern for foreign policy nowadays. And it's also helpful in understanding why did America behave the way it did in the past? Why did they adopt these different sorts of policies in regard to foreign affairs? So think about that. You guys are awesome. Peace out.